Hey everybody, how's it going? All right, let's see what we can do with this. There we go. Awesome. Okay, everybody, how's it going? Let me know if you can see me and hear me. The camera does keep popping off. There we go. Hi, everybody. It is so awesome to have you here. I am just very, very passionate about delivering this training to you. I know what a crazy situation we're in at the moment. I know just how overwhelming it is, how much information we're having piled on us at the moment and how uh, difficult it is to navigate through that information. Um, and I wanted to run this session because I know that I can help. I know that there are things that we can do uh, to massively support our body, to fortify our immune system, to give our body strength, to um, make sure that we put ourselves in the best possible position to protect ourselves. And of course, there is no guarantee with anything we do at all. I'm in no way saying that right now we can guarantee that coronavirus will not impact us no matter what we do. Of course not. But there is a lot we can do using real whole foods, the power of nature to make sure that we're putting ourselves in the best possible position. So as we get started a couple of minutes late, because Facebook, unbeknownst to me, have completely changed the whole way they do Facebook lives. And I'm sort of na trying to navigate my way around. Um, so if you're there and you're listening in, give me a big hello. Let me know where you're from in the world um, and where you're self-isolating. <laughs> We're all just sat at home at the moment and we can get into this now. To date, obviously, there's a lot happening. Um, there's a lot uh, like I said, there's a lot of information being put at us at once, but most of the information that we're being given is focusing around washing our hands, using rubs on our hands, staying at home, not going out, just sitting tight. And it's creating this vibe that we're kind of powerless and helpless in this situation. We just need to sit tight and hope that we're one of the lucky ones that this doesn't impact. There is so much more hope to this. There's so much more of a message that of things that you can be doing and things that we can take power and take action and, and, and bring power back into our lives and take steps forwards. You know, the, the message that we're generally getting from the media at the moment, and I totally understand why, I get where they're coming from, is that there is no cure, there is no food you can eat that's gonna kill the virus. There's no, and, and of course, like I totally, there is no, there is no single one thing that's gonna kill a virus. That's absolutely true. But what you can do, and the re everything I'm gonna share with you today is proven in the research, you can do so much to strengthen your immune system. Your immune system is based around three responses, primarily the first two, the innate immune, immune response and the adaptive immune response. These are directly strengthened or weakened by the state of your overall health. Just in the innate immune response, that first stage of your immune system when um, there's certain proteins called inf interferons that interfere with the virus as it enters the body and, and uh, destroy it before it can take a hold. These rely on a really healthy level of uh, inflammation in your body. If inflammation in your body is out of control, the cytokines that your body creates to support these proteins are already well out of control and the proteins can't be produced. In the adaptive immune response, your body requires on the health of your body's ability to produce and strengthen what are known as your T cells. If your insulin is out of balance, if you're consuming too much sugar, there's an uh, insulin response that's uh, not um, being properly regulated, your body loses the ability to charge these T cells and get them to do their work. Your digestive system plays such a role in your immune response. A whole load of your immune system is housed in your digestive system. If your gut bacteria is out of balance, this can't function properly. Inflammation is so, so important here. Your hormonal response is so important here. Your digestive system is so important. And of course, we know these are all things we can use foods to heal, to balance, to make sure they're working optimally. So to think that there's nothing we can do, 
and we just have to sit tight and keep our hands clean is doing such a massive disservice physically to our health and mentally, psychologically, in terms of our ability to actually put one foot in front of the other and protect ourselves, protect our family. So I want to share with you today, really, I, there's four key things I want to share with you today. They're all definitely research and evidence-based. They are quick and easy to put into action. And each of the four things we could break out into and go for an hour on each of them. Within each of those four, there could easily be five or six subtopics. So we're going to keep it pretty high level today. What I would say for you guys is um, you can, and I need to find out how I can uh, post a message to you guys <laughs> in, the, uh, in the stream here. There you go. Uh, Facebook's new thing is not the most intuitive, I have to say. Thank you for this, Facebook. So I can't work out how to uh, post an announcement, so I can just put it in as a comment. All of this information that I'm going to share with you today, you can get in kind of a downloadable form in depth, massive, massive depth. What I've done this month to support you guys is I've made what's normally my paid coaching group available for free for the next month. Absolutely free. You can just jump in, get all the information, download it, use it as much as you want, jump out whenever you want. There's no, you don't need to pay anything. There's no credit card or anything like that. You can just jump in for free. I'm going to be going through all of this that I'm sharing with you today in so much more depth in there. Today, I just want to get you started and moving quickly. So with that being said, it's just gone 6 a.m. and I know I've got a lot of talking ahead of me. So... I'm going to take a sip of my water. And what I want you guys to remember is you don't have to do everything all at once. You don't have to stress yourselves out more. We'll get on to stress in a little bit. But you don't have to stress yourself out more by trying to do it all at once. We can simply start at the start and work through these things one at a time. The first thing I want to share with you today is simple, simple supplements. Now, I don't normally like to lead with supplements in my general training because food is the best way to go. Supplements are generally there to supplement. But in this case, to get going really, really fast, and these supplements can do so much good so quickly, supplements are meant to be there as a safety net. And in all of these nutrients I'm going to share with you, the safety net is so important. Okay, It is essential that you've got adequate levels of all of these nutrients. The first one I want to share with you is vitamin D. Okay. Very, very recent research has uh, looked into the impact of coronavirus, not COVID-19. That's super, super new. But previous coronaviruses, which share a very similar makeup to COVID-19, of course. The research shows that people who are very deficient in vitamin D, which is a lot of people, don't presume that's not you. It could be people that have uh, very deficient in vitamin D have a 50% greater risk of contracting a coronavirus and a far greater risk of increased severity and duration of the symptoms. 50%, that is too big to ignore. Even people who are only just mildly deficient still had a 10% increased risk. Vitamin D in capsule format, D3 you want to be getting, is super cheap, super easy to access, and I'm pretty sure you will still be able to buy it everywhere, um, despite the crazy hoardings. Um, you generally should be taking uh, or getting about a thousand international units a day, a thousand IU per day. That's how vitamin D is measured. Um, I would recommend at the moment it's two thousand, maybe up to four thousand. I'm personally taking four thousand IUs a day, and I live in a sunny country. Um, there is also the fact that a lot of people will now be saying, oh, just go out and get some sun. Firstly, a lot of you can't do that. Northern Hemisphere, you're only just coming out of winter. Secondly, there's only certain periods of the year and certain times of the day that you are getting the beneficial rays from the sun, not the harmful rays of the sun. And the sun, it, it's complex and it's hard to work out, but it needs to be at about a 40 degree angle. Um, but just being in the sun isn't a guarantee. It needs to be at the right times of the day. So it's easy to get a deficiency. 
just taking a vitamin D supplement can be a huge help. Vitamin C is the next one. People will often just ignore this because it's so simple, it's so unsexy, it's so, you know, run of the mill stuff, but it's really important right now. So much research has proven vitamin C to be essential in boosting the immune system, strengthening it, fighting off colds, influenza, um, there's a hospital or a group of hospitals in New York right now that are treating uh, COVID-19 patients with high dose uh, intravenous vitamin C, and they're seeing great results. That was based on a study that came out of Wuhan. Um, obviously, very quick, quick and dirty studies, uh, observational data. <laughs> it's real time. It's happening now. Um, in Wuhan showing that uh, the patients that were given this high dose uh, vitamin C protocol generally did seem to recover much, much more quickly with no obviously harmful effects from vitamin C. You can't really uh, get vitamin C toxicity um, unless you're going absolutely crazy, which is very hard to do uh, without uh, an intravenous uh, supply. Um, but vitamin C slowed the severity again, uh, quickened the recovery. Um, it's just too easy. The risk is zero almost. Um, you can never say zero with anything, um, but the possible benefits are huge. So vitamin D, vitamin C. The third one that I want to recommend is curcumin, that anti-inflammatory extract from turmeric. So important to get your inflammation under control. I just touched on it at the start of this session when I was walking through very, very quickly um, just a few of those stages of the immune response and how we can help all three of the stages of the immune response, all three sub stages within each of those three stages relies on your body's correct regulation of your immune, of your inflammatory response. Cytokines, which are the inflammatory cells that your body produces, are extremely beneficial and useful in your immune response. However, when we're living in a way that is producing inflammation in our body, which is coming pr predominantly from consuming gluten, from consuming sugar, from consuming processed foods, toxins, um, when these foods, this lifestyle-based uh, production of cytokines is happening all the time and we've got a lot of inflammation in our body, it renders that part of your immune system almost useless. And every stage of immunity requires a proper inflammatory response. So it's just so important that we get on top of inflammation right now. From a supplement point of view, curcumin is the way to go. Um, curcumin phytosome is my favorite form of curcumin. Um, it's very bioavailable. You don't need to, we can talk about it. If there are questions at the end, feel free to put questions in as we get towards the Q&A session. I should have mentioned we're going to have a little Q&A at the end of this. Um, you don't really need the pepper. That's a bit of a myth. Um, but curcumin as a supplement, as a baseline again, vitamin D, vitamin C, curcumin, those three as a baseline are going to do you so much good immediately. They immediately get to work. There's others, of course, a green powder of wheatgrass and barley grass and all these types of things. Uh, a good mineral, a good alkaline mineral supplement would, would be really useful as well. Zinc is going to be useful. Selenium. But we could go forever and I could end up giving you a bill of a thousand dollars a month for just supplements here. We're going to rely on foods. We're going to rely on our lifestyle. But these three supplements to give you that baseline of vitamin D, vitamin C and curcumin for, for the, that powerful anti-inflammatory compound from turmeric, they're just too important to miss. So I please, please, please do recommend you get those in stock now and start using them right away. From a food perspective, um, how much vitamin C, Penny asks, the Q&A is at the end, but if a relevant question comes in, I will answer it straight away. How much vitamin C you do want to be aiming to get, look, a high-ish dose. You want to be looking at, I would say, around 1,000% RDA as a good baseline. That's not out of the ordinary. That's absolutely not. I mean, I mean that's the sort of level that I'd recommend most for most people most days, to be honest. So that is a baseline, um, but certainly three, four, five thousand percent RDA of vitamin C would not hurt over these next few weeks while this thing is really kicking off. Um, the sort, the type of vitamin C, any will do. Whatever your budget can extend to is great. 
but any will do right now because they it is really easily absorbed it's a very very simple uh supplement to manufacture um it not a lot of technology or, or smart ways to make sure that it's bioavailable when it is super bioavailable of course the best way to get all these things is through foods as i mentioned supplements are there to supplement i wanted to make sure that you get the baseline in but foods in terms of the foods that you really need to be including right now to strengthen and fortify and boost your immune system again I'll go into so much more of this depth um, if you just hop into that uh, membership to get that the, the, the pass for 30 days it's all going to be laid out there for you throughout the month of April where I go into so much more depth on so many more foods and how to include them practically in your life with all the recipes and everything else but the foods you want to be focusing on First and foremost, top of the tree is greens, leafy greens, ideally. So when we look at what the immune system needs to uh, function optimally and, and regulate properly, we need to be getting a high dose of antioxidants. Um, we need to be getting uh, foods that are alkaline forming. We need to be getting foods that are anti-inflammatory, of course. And then there are a few super nutrients that are specifically excellent for your immune system. So leafy greens um, contain a very, very wide blend of antioxidants, many of which uh, camphorol, lutein, um, are so specifically strong for the immune system. There was a study done in 2014, I think it was, um, out of Washington State uh, that, I, that was the design was to locate, identify the most nutrient dense foods on earth on a micronutrient level. So not macronutrients, protein, fiber, those things, the micronutrient levels, vitamins, antioxidants, minerals. They identified the top 41, seemed like an arbitrary number to me, but the top 41, the top 15 foods were all leafy green vegetables the top 15 most nutrient dense foods on earth are all leafy green vegetables. That tells you something, okay? You need to be getting more of these into your diet. Everyone, the government all over the world are like five a day, five a day, five a day. That five a day of like fresh vegetables and fruits also includes like potatoes. Uh, like God bless the potato, but it's not gonna get you where you wanna be. If you look at packaging on, on processed foods like baked beans have got the, this gives you one a day. How is a tin of baked beans giving you a serve of vegetables a day? So we need to be a little bit more advanced with this. And my recommendation isn't five serves of fresh fruits or vegetables a day. It's not even just five serves of vegetables a day. It's five serves of leafy greens a day or greens because I want to include broccoli in this. But if you can get five serves of greens a day or three serves of greens a day, it's going to do you wonders. Now, I want to touch on broccoli specifically because broccoli and most cruciferous vegetables, we can talk about the whole oxalate thing and nightshades and all of that in the Q&A if you want. But just ignore it. The whole, uh, all cruciferous vegetables, but specifically broccoli, contain a nutrient that we're only really scratching the surface of its power now and it's it's quite incredible it's called sulforaphane okay it's spelled uh if you want to google it sulforaphane um so amazing for so many things one of the things that we have found though is that it is specifically powerful at supporting your body's production of uh, white blood cells lymphocytes and healthy t cells those cells that track down and do many many things of one of which is kill the virus in your body okay so getting loads of broccoli broccoli sprouts even better if you can get hold of those or um uh, a powdered broccoli sprout powder um can do the same thing if you can't sprout your own but broccoli is so important for that very reason but the leafy greens essential how are you going to get these in every day just guys get started on your juices and your smoothies so important i mean i know it's a pain in the butt <laughs> But if you can start having this daily juice or daily smoothie that contains all of these beautiful greens, you know, for me, a typical juice would be something along the lines of cucumber and celery, really nutrient dense in themselves, but they give you that liquidy sort of electrolyte rich, mineral rich base. 
um, and then add to that spinach and kale and broccoli and turmeric and ginger, which we're going to talk about next. A juice that, you, you know, you can water it down. You can get some coconut water in there as well, make it a little bit sweeter. But that juice each day will do you absolute wonders, absolute wonders. I cannot stress how much on a smoothie side, avocado and cucumber and spinach and lettuce, um, bell pepper. Um, you could get, you know, obviously you need a milk in there. So like coconut milk or almond milk, you can make it uh, chocolatey by putting cacao in there. All these types of wonderful foods, get some coconut oil in there for some healthy fats. Doing this on a daily basis amazing 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 it will do so much for your immune system uh, i cannot stress it enough please start having a juice or a smoothie daily from the bottom of my heart to yours don't skip that other simple things i always recommend just having a side salad with every meal that you make so even if you just carry on having the normal meals that you're having um, with these supplements added in have a side salad with each of those meals, just a couple of handfuls of greens, some lemon uh, olive oil, some uh, get some garlic in there as well. We're going to touch on garlic in a second too. Um, just crush some garlic in some lemon olive oil, put that on the greens. That's your side salad done. You're getting two serves of leafy greens with every meal. Perfect. These are the simple, easy things you need to be doing. Again, the step-by-step -step of all of this stuff is in the masterclass in that membership. I, I, I gave you the link earlier. Here it is again. You can join it for absolutely free for 30 days, zero obligation. It's just my gift to you. The masterclass is coming out on Wednesday, possibly Tuesday. I might go a little bit early. Um, and all of this is step by step in there. I really, really urge you guys to jump in. Um, it, it's We're going to have a lot of resources and communication to support you right now to go through this. So I touched on garlic just now. Garlic is a proven antiviral, just like sulforaphane antiviral garlic is an antiviral i really really want you to start including these things in your diet now raw garlic is where it's at the compound in garlic that is such a strong antiviral is called allicin it's incredibly sensitive to uh, air and heat and light so i encourage you to find ways to get raw garlic into your life um I like to just blend it up into soups once the soup's finished. Blend the raw garlic in. You know, make things like pesto and hummus at home, um, guacamole. Just find, if you can find one way to get some raw garlic into your diet each day, you are going to be winning. It is powerful. On that, similarly, avocado, um, the healthy fats aside, which again, important during the, for the immune system, the glutathione in avocado is the master antioxidant and antioxidants are essential right now so finding ways to get avocado each day obviously the smoothies i just talked about um avocado makes an amazing incredible creamy base for your smoothies but make things like guacamole as well just having avocado on that side salad or just having some avocado on some gluten-free toast or sprouted toast sprouted bread toast um avocado is going to be a big help what we've gone through leafy greens garlic avocado turmeric and ginger they sort of come hand in hand but i'm going to focus on the turmeric part of it so probably the most researched food on earth ever ever and if you guys are still out there because i'm just trying to get this info to you as quick as i can i'm mindful of everybody's time and i'm mindful that it's very late in europe right now if you're all out there give me a hello in that chat box while i take a sip of my drink and let me know how you're going because I connecting with you guys is what's most important to me. <laughs> so give me a big hello if you're out there in the chat box right now and, and I'm still live because on this crazy new Facebook way of doing these lives, I'm not sure if I'm just talking to myself. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> with that being said, turmeric, the most researched food on earth, it is massively anti-inflammatory. It's massively anti-cancer. It fights cancer on so many different levels. It's so, so great for your cognitive health. And it's super antiviral as well. I say this to all of my members. I say this to all of the people in my cleanse group, to all of the people that I ever come into contact with anywhere in my life ever, get fresh turmeric daily. Phew, I'm glad you're all still there because there's a delay on this. And I said that and nothing happened for a few seconds there. Um, getting fresh turmeric every day. Essential.
okay? These are just like, I know it feels like I'm going, do this every day, do this every day, do this every day, but I'm only really giving you a handful of things that I want you to do every day. And combined, they take five minutes of your day to do all of them spread across your day, and they will literally change your life doing these things. So turmeric, I want you to get about that much every day of fresh turmeric, about a centimeter. If you are struggling to find it fresh right now, which I totally get, check Amazon. Check Amazon, you'll be surprised. <laughs> you'll be surprised. Um, I'll get on to what to do with powdered turmeric in a moment. Um, but fresh turmeric every day is going to do so much for you. Obviously, it's got the curcumin. I'm really recognizing that I'm saying obviously too much, but I'm going to give myself a little free pass on it because I've been up since 3.30 preparing for it, and it's only 6.30 now. So obviously, that makes me a little bit tongue-tied at times. Um, <laughs> the, um, the curcumin in turmeric is going to be a huge help, but there's tons more in turmeric as well. The curcumin is the anti-inflammatory compound, but there's tons more in the fresh stuff. So getting fresh is going to be amazing. The best things you can be doing are adding it to your juices and your smoothies, making fresh turmeric tea. So there's two ways you can do this. Again, all the recipes and all the step-by-steps are in that free resource that I'm giving to you here. Just follow, like a lot of people have chatted now, so I'll put the link in again. In that free resource, all the recipes, millions of recipes, um, but how to make the turmeric and ginger. And in that resource as well, I should mention the um, uh, the community that's in there. There's guys on here that are in the community. They can vouch for how amazing that community is. Um, and being in a community right now is so essential, not being alone. And I've already had an outpouring of messages from people just going, you know, I'm isolating on my own, feeling lonely. Now that I've got this community, I'm feeling great. You know, so get in there, get a part of the community. You're all on Facebook. So you're comfortable on Facebook. The community is on Facebook. It's amazing. Um, turmeric teas. That's where I was. Um, two simple ways. One, just simply grate or peel or chop some turmeric and some ginger into, say, 350 milliliters of water. Simmer it on your stovetop for five minutes. Um, squeeze a bit of lemon in at the end. Pour it into a mug. Drink it. You can eat the chunks at the end if you want. I do. That's one way. That's sort of like a tea that's kind of fresh and light and you know, the other way is to make kind of a latte where instead of using water, you would use like coconut milk or almond milk or uh, whatever type of non-dairy milk you like. Simmer it again for five minutes. Um, you can chuck in some bits and pieces uh, like cloves and, um, and, and cinnamon and uh, all sorts of other bits if you want. Chuck it all into your high-speed blender. Whiz it all up till it's smooth. I'd probably remove the cloves first, though, before I did that one. Um, and that way you've got that sort of latte style as well. Delicious. Just doing that each day will give you that amount of turmeric each day, and it will change your life. Other ways, you can grate turmeric into salads. You can obviously, like I said, put it into a juice or smoothies. You can add turmeric to your soups and your stews. It gives them like a really... Um, lovely sort of depth to it um oh, there's tons of ways there's tons of ways in that um membership that you've got access to there is also you get not only my information on immune boosting by the way you get access to the whole membership so there's all of my previous trainings and everything in there as well and one of the previous trainings is the anti-inflammation month each month we kind of have a theme and this month this month is kind of immune boosting month as you could probably tell. Um, in the anti-inflammation month, we've got a seven-day turmeric challenge where I give you seven different ways to get turmeric across seven different days. Uh, so there's loads more ideas in there yet. Yeah, just jump in. You'll love it. You'll love it. So we had greens. We had garlic. We had avocado. We had turmeric. I'll give you one more, um, and that I'm going to go for beetroot. Beets, the simple beet. Real quick, beetroot, uh, nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is being proven to really help cleanse and boost your blood uh, oxygen levels, which is really good for your immunity. Simple as that. So beetroot, eat it, roast it, juice it, grate it into your salads, 
or however you want to have it, but beetroot is the is the fifth one. There's so many more that I could go into, but in the interests of time, we're at half an hour already, and I did only want to go for 45 minutes. I know what how late it's getting. Um, for some of you, very, very early for others. Uh, so the that's kind of the easy bit. The more difficult bit is the things you need to start avoiding. Now, I am going to keep this to just one because I don't want to overwhelm you. And uh, I think one of the things that's being missed in the stimulus packages and the recommendations and the sort of the concern that the state is putting out to the people, I think one of the things that is being missed is the psychological impact here. It concerned me. Don't want to go too much into that now, but this is why I'm only going to tell you one thing you need to get out because I don't want you to lose all of your psychologically uh, rewarding <laughs> foods at this time. The more you can do, the better. But the one thing that I might ask you to reduce as much as possible, you don't have to go cold turkey, you don't have to stress yourself out, but reduce as much as possible. You probably already guessed it. Sugar. Azuka. Sugar is really, really detrimental to your immune system. Really detrimental to your immune system. Did any of you guys happen to see the uh, interview that just went live yesterday, I believe, we, that I did with Dr. Daryl uh, on his Get Off Your Sugar Summit? It was a good one. And uh, there is a recording of that exact interview in the membership, if you didn't see it. I recommend it. Also in the membership is my entire Quit Sugar program that members get for free. So you can jump into the membership to get that too. The reason I want you to quit sugar is it's super acidic, super inflammatory, and very, very much immune suppressing. So let's touch on each of those things real quick because I want to give you the motivation as to why, because I know sugar can be tricky. It's very addictive. It's biochemically proven to be very addictive. Research last year, no, two years ago, 2018. We're in 2020 now, which is mind blowing. And what a year it's been so far. Um, research 2018 from Melbourne, go Australia, uh, has demonstrated, we didn't know this before, this is why it's so important to keep up on all the research. Um, another one of the things I'm doing this month in the membership which I don't normally do and I don't know if I will continue to do, but there's going to be a little section where I'm going to be putting all of the research that I'm finding about coronavirus and about this whole situation we're in from a health perspective, not the epidemiology stuff. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole, but I'm going to put all the research that I find about coronavirus in a section there with my commentary and takeaways for you. So we can start to sort of dissect and ground a bit of the information. Um, but this research two years ago has isolated that when there is a, uh, or sorry, it's isolated the essential role that we didn't know before that insulin plays in the f function of your T cells, which are arguably the most important part of your immune response, okay? So when you're, um, thank you, Paula. So when you're, uh, and Desiree, we'll get onto gluten in the Q&A, okay? I don't wanna leave the gluten, the gluten addicts behind. When your insulin response is irregular or compromised, your body loses the ability to what the researchers wonderfully called it loses the ability to supercharge your T cells. Now your T cells do a lot of things. They go in, they destroy um, the cells of the virus. They, they can find infected cells and render them useless. They can prevent the, the virus from penetrating new cells. The T cells also split off to help modulate the cytokine response. They can split off further. There's so many things that these T cells do. They're so important. And your body uses insulin to kind of power this function. So when you've got insulin resistance or you're pre-diabetic or you've got type 2 diabetes or even if you're just eating too much sugar or even in this moment right now where your body needs your T cells functioning in this hour because you just touched something and put your hand to your mouth but you've just gone and had a massive sugary meal and your insulin has spiked and dropped and spiked and dropped, 
you lose this capacity to supercharge your T cells. So that is just one way or one reason that we need to get on top of sugar and reduce our sugar intake. Sugar also is probably the most acid forming food we know of when you're, and this I'm simplifying this greatly for the interest of time, we could go for hours on sugar. When you consume sugar, your blood pH drops to below its optimal level and your body has to just do so much hard work to push it back up. I know a lot of you will have heard me talk about this before, but this state where this is optimal pH, this is safe level. Below this is where you your kidneys shut down and you die, basically. So your body will happily keep you in this level here, below optimal, but in this safe area. This is where disease and imbalance and everything proliferates in this area. And it's hard, hard, hard work to get back up here, really hard work. So your body does everything it can to just keep you safe, right? One of those things, let's talk about a couple of them. One of those things is it causes your body to pump out a whole load of cortisol. When your cortisol levels go up, repeatedly chronically elevated cortisol it stresses your adrenals now your adrenals are really really important in that first stage of immune response the innate immune response your adrenals are really really uh critical in modulating that stage of your immune response when your um ph is constantly being pushed down and your body is constantly pumping out cortisol not only does that then cause your pH to go down again, it's like a vicious cycle, but it stresses your adrenals. Your adrenals cannot work properly, your immune system suffers. Another one of the things that happens when you consume a lot of sugar is it affects your gut bacteria balance. Gut dysbiosis, when you've got way too much bad bacteria to good bacteria, candida proliferates. A huge part of your immune system actually sits in your digestive system. And when your digestive system is compromised, that second phase of your immune response um, the, adapt the adaptive immune response, that cannot function properly. It creates a whole bunch of uh, inflammation. When you consume a lot of sugar, particularly fructose, which is most sugars contain at least 40 to 50% fructose. Uh, high fructose corn syrup is almost 100% fructose. But when you're consuming a lot of fructose, your liver metabolizing that fructose instantly creates um, acidity, it creates uric acid, which drives your pH down and out of the cortisol, it instantly creates uh, inflammatory markers. So those cytokines get produced really overstimulated so they can't properly be regulated when they're needed. Um, and it instantly creates visceral fat cells, which those fat cells all trigger their own immune, uh, sorry, inflammation response as well. Sugar's got to go. Sugar's got to go. Now, most people, uh, Claudia, this Facebook record it for me. So I will be posting the recording of this into that membership portal as well with the handouts to go with it. Um, most people find it hard to quit sugar, I believe, because they literally jump in and go, I'm not going to eat any more sugar. That's not necessarily the way to go. A lot of my teaching, I like to take the 2080 approach, I like to call it, whereby 20% of the inputs usually lead to at least 80% of the result. So what I want you to do and in the quit sugar training in the membership that you've got free access to, uh, I go through a whole load of exercises and it's a 14 day thing and it works. It just works. It's really easy. You get no cravings and all that stuff. But what I want you to do right now is just make a little retrospective food diary to go for the last three days. This is what I ate and drank. Don't go further back than three days. You'll have forgotten. Don't do it just for the last day because that's not enough of a big enough sample size for this. The last three days and be really, really honest. No one's going to look at it but you, so be really honest. Everything you ate and drank. Then immediately you'll be able to see some of the big problem areas. Immediately. It's eye-opening when you do this. But what you can also do to find the hidden gems. Oh, it's flipped to the other camera again, hasn't it? All right. There we go. What you can also do to find the hidden gems is uh, go to the website. You can just Google this, but it's called, the one I like to use is nutritiondata.self.com. I think that's what it is. Um, but just Google nutrition data self. Oh, there you go. That was right. Enter the foods that you've put in your diary. They've got packaged foods in there as well. So if you ate 
some McVitie's digestive biscuits, they will have that. And you can see exactly how much sugar and everything is in each thing. And just total up your days and look, total up each meal or each snack. Um, what you'll find is, A, 80% or more of the sugar you're consuming each day is coming from 20% or less of the foods that you're eating. And B, what most people find is, most of those foods that are containing 8% of sugar, you're not even that bothered about. They're not that great. And they're easy to swap. And they're simple to swap. Honestly, guys, if you need to quit sugar, please just, if you even if you're not bothered about boosting your immune system, but you just want to quit sugar, get into that now, the, the base camp, and go through this quit sugar training because I outlined step-by-step step all the simple swaps. But the places where most people find it's breakfast cereals and what they're having at breakfast. It's um, flavoured drinks. It's coffees with all the added bits and pieces. It's uh, sauces and dressings on their foods, things like cereal, muesli bars, um, breakfast bars, protein bars, that kind of thing, protein supplements. Um, but it's really, really quick and simple to get it out. I, we could go forever um, on uh, how to get sugar out. I just wanted to highlight for you that that's the main one to get out. If there's, if there was going to be another one, it's, it would be gluten. Um, let's just touch on gluten now. Gluten is the second possibly joint top most acidic inflammatory food on earth. It spikes your blood sugar like nothing else, perhaps more than sugar itself. Um, sorry, I nearly lost myself then. Uh, can you guys still see me and hear me all right? Let me just check in because Leslie's saying that the training keeps buffering. I want to check that that's just Leslie's uh, internet connection and not everything. Um, Gluten spikes your blood sugar like nothing else. And when you repeatedly spike your blood sugar, that's when you're going to get that uh, insulin imbalance, insulin resistance, and so on. It's really, really important that you get the gluten out. Again, really simple swaps. The, the gluten that you're looking to get out is things like wheat, spelt, rye, barley. Um, I mean, that sort of covers most of them. The, the, the sort of the grains or the replacements that you can include um, uh, would be oats, they are gluten-free by nature. We can talk about more in the Q&A if we need to. Oats, um, quinoa, chia, um, amaranth, buckwheat. Uh, you don't need to completely give up those meals. This is the thing. So if you're having gluten at breakfast, for instance, if you're having a gluten-y cereal and toast at breakfast, you can change to a gluten-free cereal and you can change to gluten-free bread. Simple. Um, you you know, instead of using pasta, you can, in the best case scenario, you'd make spiralized like noodles or uh, like zucchini noodles or carrot noodles, but you can just use a gluten-free pasta. Um, it's, it's so simple. You can have oats for breakfast. You can make little chia pots. All of this stuff, again, is in the master classes in the group that I'm delivering to you this month. All the swaps, how to quit gluten. Um, how to quit sugar, how to quit gluten, all of these swaps are in there, but getting gluten out is really, really important. If nothing else, because of that blood sugar response that you get, it, gluten contains a protein called amylopexin A that literally spikes your blood sugar more than fructose, glucose, sucrose. It's crazy for your blood sugar. So you need to be getting the gluten down, if not out. And it's a lot easier than most people think. It's really just those habitual meals you know, at lunch, you're going, oh, I don't know what to eat. I'll just have a sandwich. Join the Alkaline Base Camp. Get in on this free pass. There's hundreds of recipes in there. There's probably a hundred different lunch and dinner, lunch recipes, hundred different dinner recipes, hundreds of recipes in there. Cutting those out is so essential. Um, the fourth and final thing I want to touch on today, and guys, if you do have questions that you want me to that you possibly can start putting them in the Q&A into the comments box now because I will be able to. Hello, Lauren. Hi, Barbara. Uh, lovely to see familiar faces. Kim, I saw earlier as well. It's so great to to, to just see and Sue, Simone. Um, I'm, if I'm missing anyone, I'm so sorry, Veronica. I'm just scrolling through real quick and seeing some names that I recognize. No matter how you all going. Um, uh, if you do have questions, put them in now. The fourth and final thing, 
that I want to cover today. And this really is a biggie. And it's a bit like vitamin C in that it's so, so simple and so easy that people often overlook it and don't give it the importance it deserves. And this thing is so essential for your immune system, so essential for your detoxification system, so essential for your liver and your kidneys and your endocrine system and your digestive system. And that is simple hydration. Guys, <clears throat> hello, Donna. I'm going to have a little sip right now just to prove the point. Hydration in this state we're in now of boosting our immune system, fortifying our body is absolutely essential. You cannot be healthy and dehydrated. You cannot have strong immunity and be dehydrated. I cannot stress this enough. You have to get your hydration sorted. You need to be aiming for at least 100 fluid ounces of water every day. You can build up to that. If you're literally drinking nothing at the moment, you can build up to it. But you need to be aiming for 100 to 120 fluid ounces of water every single day. Don't get bogged down in, oh, do I buy this filter, that filter, this alkaline machine, that one? Do, do I get an honor? Don't get bogged down in all of that in a minute. If you haven't got any form of filtration at the moment, filtration is the most important thing. And just a simple countertop jug, you know, 30, 40 bucks, that's enough right now. You, you do want to be filtering your tap water, but that's enough right now. That will get out bacteria, chlorine and chloramines, a few of the metals and, and things like lead and, and a few of the agricultural bits and pollutants we see in our tap water. That will be good for now. You need to sort of look at how you're getting hydrated. It's not enough to just go, I'm just going to drink more water, which I, it, I've been talking nonstop for 46 minutes. A little bit of water is necessary. You don't want to just go, I'm going to drink more water. This is going to be great because you'll get to 9, 10 o'clock at night and go, oh, I forgot. Every day, I forgot. And you can't just drink 100 fluid ounces of water at 9 o'clock at night. That's, that ain't going to work out too well for you. You need to be working it into your daily habits. This is my number one tip for you. Link your hydration habit to habits you already have. I know some of you will have heard me say this a million times before, but if you're not doing it, do it. There's no point me saying it to a million times if you're not going to do it. So if you aren't doing this, do it. Link your hydration habit to habits that already exist. That's the easiest, fastest way to form a new habit. Okay? So you wake up every day. That's a habit you have. Have a glass of water as soon as you wake up. You clean your teeth twice a day. Some people more. Some people like to clean the teeth three times a day. But you drink, clean your teeth twice a day. Have a glass of water each time you clean your teeth. You make breakfast every day. Have a glass of water then. You get, in a normal world, you would get to your office desk at work. So these days, it's in your home office. As soon as you sit down at your desk, go, ah, oh, I need to get a glass of water. Go and get a glass of water before you start work, before you cook dinner. Every ritual and habit you have in your day, link it to hydration. And it doesn't just have to be a glass of water. It can be a, a cup of herbal tea. It can be your daily juice or your smoothie. It can be some, it can be broth of your liking. It can be lemon water. It can be that turmeric tea. You can flavor your water. You can put lemon in it. You can, you know, make a big pitcher of water and, and drop in some cucumber or some uh, mint or some celery or those things to just flavor it a little bit and make it delicious. But every day, make sure that you're getting what we say in Australia, three to four litres. You guys are saying 100 to 120 fluid ounces. Just make sure every day you're hitting that target. You cannot have a strong immune system if you are dehydrated flat out. Guys, those are my four steps for you to be able to do right now to immediately start strengthening your immune system. Again, crazy times we're in and I know a lot of people are feeling stuck and overwhelmed and I hope today that this has given you that feeling that a what you do with your diet and your lifestyle is important and it does help and it gives you back that sense of personal power and confidence and momentum that you know what we can do something here we don't just have to sit back passively and hope for the best we can do something okay Getting those simple supplements, getting these simple, simple foods in each day, even if you just focus on one of those food areas that I talked about and get that one in, 
cutting sugar and gluten as much as you can without stressing yourself out and getting hydrated. Those four things are really, really simple. You can do them right away and they will make a massive difference to every stage of your immune system, okay? It will make a difference. I'm not just making this stuff up. All of this is backed by research. It's all in the literature. I never teach you things that are just guesswork because that's what leads you to crazy hypotheses on things like oxalate, which are complete BS. We can talk about that in the Q&A if you like. Um, that's what leads you down those blind alleys and makes things confusing and overwhelming. I only ever teach you based on what is in the scientific literature that has been tested on humans. All of this has, so take that confidence with you. Um, the Q&A now, we will go for, I reckon, about half an hour based on the number of questions that have come in already. I strongly, strongly recommend, I really, really urge you, I'm going to post the link again because it keeps uh, popping off. I wonder if I can pin this. Let me see if I can pin it to the top. Nope. Used to be able to do that in the old Facebook Live world. Can't do that anymore. Uh I'm not loving this new interface for Facebook Live, but I'm sure I'll get used to it at some point. Um, let me see if I can put it in as like a question or a poll or something. Question, join here. Question, it, you might need to copy and paste it if I do this. There we go. How does that, how does that work? No, that's not going to work. I'll give it up. All right. Let me start going through a few of your questions. But before I do and while I have a sip, has that been useful to you guys? Has that been useful? And have you jumped in and joined my training for free for the next 30 days? This, honestly, I know it might seem a bit too good to be true, um, but there's genuinely, there's no funny business going on here. You'll see when you go to that page, there's no, um, there's no credit card requirement to, you know, to sort of try to like, None of that. You just put your, your name and your email in, which will be your username, your email address, and hit join, and, and you get access straight away. The reason I'm doing it is because this month, April, coming up, in my membership, every month there's a different focus, like I said. We've had effortless weight loss, digestive healing, uh, kidney rejuvenation month. We've had eating for energy. We've had all these different – this month was going to be the hormone reset month. And then coronavirus kicked in and I just, it got to about two weeks ago. I was just this, I just need to make this immune boosting month, <laughs> frankly. And so it, I had to do like a crazy amount of work to pivot <laughs> and create a whole new month worth of training for all of my members. But as I was creating that training, I just couldn't help but feel that everyone needed this. It just didn't seem... I don't want to say it didn't seem fair because that's not the right thing, but it just felt like the right thing to do was to make it available to all of you and to give you access to the community so that you can be a part of a really lovely group of like-minded people that are all helping each other every day and to give you access to me for when we do our Q&A calls, a bit like this. Um, and I'm also in that Facebook community answering questions and supporting you every day. It just made sense that... I needed to give this information to everyone. So that's why I've decided to do this. I want to give you that background because I don't want to – it seems like – it might seem too good to be true, and I think that might be making some people go, oh, I'm not sure. But um, jump in. Just jump in. Like, honestly, you'll see when you go to the page, there's – it's just a username and a password is all it asks for. Oh, your name and, a, and an email address. And then it gives you a username and password. And then you can jump in, get access to the whole thing for 30 days. Use it as much as you want, as little as you want. All the immune boosting training is going to be rolling out over the next 30 days, step by step, actionable stuff. And you can get it all for free. So there we go. So thank you for all of the nice things. Um, Veronica, that link is up there. But if you just Google nutritiondata.self.com, um, if someone wants to... If someone's got it and wants to put it in for Veronica into the chat box, that'd be great. All right. So let's see about these questions. So Dominique has asked, what about swapping for whole foods? I don't know what you mean. 
to be honest, I don't know what you mean. Can you clarify that question a bit? Um, when you put lemon and basil in water, can you use the lemon or basil or fruits for more than one day? I probably wouldn't, um, just because they can go bad and we don't want to be putting bacteria into our body at the moment. But it's really, I mean, it depends on how fresh it all is, keeping it in the fridge and those sort of things. So that's kind of down to, in terms of a nutritional benefit, if you've refreshed that jug two or three times during a day, there's not going to be a lot left. Um, but certainly that's down to your own jurisdiction on that one, I think. Um, Simone, you're welcome. And some of this stuff is stuff that I've taught you already, but a lot of the people on this are new and so haven't heard some of this stuff before. When lemon is alkaline forming, when is lemon alkaline forming, boiled or raw? It's only lemon, the thing is with lemon is it is alkaline forming, but it's only mildly alkaline forming. There's a lot of hype over the years about making alkaline water with lemons. It's not really that strongly alkaline forming. It's a bit of a trick to just get you to hydrate from me, from my perspective. Look, there's alkaline minerals in the lemon, and those minerals will still be impact, intact if it is boiled. I wouldn't like stew the lemon as such if you want to keep the nutrients intact. But if you put squeeze lemon into hot water, the nutrients in the lemon will stay intact. Some of the, some of the nutrients won't do so well. Um, but if it's it's not really an alkaline strong alkaline benefit from having the lemon in the water. It's kind of more of a taste benefit in a way, but get its flavor and it gets you drinking the water. So that's kind of the thing with lemon. Um, with all foods, there's a spectrum of full nutrient intactness and zero nutrient intactness. And picked from the tree and consumed that second is full or dug from the ground or from the plant. And you do all of this stuff and get to the end of, of, of picking it, you know, storing it, it goes in a shop, it's all processed, it's da, da 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 and then there's none left. So the more you do on that spectrum, the less nutrients there'll be, but you can put in lemon in stuff, uh, cooked or raw. Um, I've read recommendations that we should not consume anything raw. I mean, that's nonsense, absolute nonsense. Um, I don't think a raw food diet is necessary. But getting a good proportion of your foods raw is useful. Following my alkaline principles, you will be getting probably between on any given day, 30 to 70 percent of your food will be raw. Like if you're having some salads, if you're having juices and smoothies, some of the soup recipes are raw. Um, yeah, by and large, you'll probably be having an average 40 to 50 percent raw foods, which is great. And that's you don't need to be having more than that. You don't need to be having more than that. Um, but the concept that you should eat nothing raw is really just uh, very restrictive. You'll have very low compliance with that, and it's not a great way to go. Um, okay, I do believe in alkaline lifestyle, but my husband doesn't, so it's very hard for me to put everything into practice. So, Anya, uh, what does your husband believe in? Does he believe that fresh fruits and vegetables are healthy? Does he believe that drinking water is a good idea, that exercising is a good idea? Does he believe that sugar and gluten and processed foods are probably not so great for you? I think I would find it really hard pressed to find any human on earth, except for maybe those weird folks that are eating just meat. Be interesting to see where they're at in a few years. Um, but those people aside, I'd find it, I think it'd be very difficult to find someone who doesn't believe in those principles. Consuming healthy, fresh fruits and vegetables, cutting out the crap, getting well hydrated, exercising well, getting good sleep, try not to be too stressed out. That's the alkaline diet. <laughs> so when you remove the word alkaline from the picture, most people are in agreement that this is what we should do. Usually in this case, what is beneath the surfaces um, is if I rephrase it, and Andrew, this isn't necessarily true in your case, but it is in a lot of cases, is my husband or partner or whoever just likes eating crap and they can't be asked to be healthy. So they're going to say, I don't believe in the alkaline lifestyle. 
that's generally the truth that sits behind this. So I know that that then makes it hard for you. So you've got to cook one meal for them, one meal for you if you really want to do it. But there's ways you can get around this. Um, one of the ways I'd say is jump into the uh, group because there's a training in there that teaches you how to um, – do all of this when you're in a family that doesn't want to basically how to make meals that you're only making one meal but they'll be happy with it and you'll be happy with it you can adjust just slightly for them and they'll still be happy with it um but i actually find if you're the person that's chiefly responsible for the cooking i find that if you just go uh you know what are the key non negotiables for your husband it might be meat or it might be dairy or something like that um and going i'm the cook i'm going to make the meal how i want it and you can have some meat on the side you can have some dairy with it they generally go yeah okay and they really love the meals that you cook and you'll be able to find meals that both of you really enjoy as well like maybe they won't enjoy having zucchini noodles with their spaghetti bolognese but just cook normal pasta for them if they really are that desperate for it and you have zucchini noodles, but you're still cooking the same spaghetti bolognese, if that makes sense. So there's lots of different little things you can do, but there's loads in the pool in membership that will support with this, absolutely. And so many recipes that you can go through those recipes with your husband and go, out of these 500 recipes, let's just find five dinners that we can both agree on and that you can adapt easily so that you'll like it and just find those and start there. Um, in terms of curcumin, you recommend supplementation, what kind of dosage? Would organic powdered turmeric have the same effect? I did say I was gonna talk about powdered turmeric, so thank you, Amor, for bringing that up. And it's lovely to see you on the session too, Amor. Um, Lauren's question has confused me, so I'll get to that next. Um, so if you can't get fresh, powdered turmeric is the next best thing, obviously. Um, but it needs to be organic. Please, please, please. Your powdered herbs and spices need to be organic. Really important because non-organic herbs and spices, dried herbs and spices, uh, they go through a process called irradiation, which basically means, you know, you look at them and they're like, expires. January 2756. Um, that's because they've gone through this process, which is basically like radiation therapy for your herbs and spices, which kills all the good bits and makes them mildly carcinogenic, which is awesome. Um, so go for organic. They won't have as long a shelf life, but that's a small cross to bear uh, for considering the alternative. So I really, really would recommend that. Um, the, the equivalent of having that sort of about a centimeter piece of uh, turmeric would be about a teaspoon a day. So try and get that in in ways that you can, like you can stir it into your juices, you can still blend it into your smoothies, you can put it into your soups, uh, you can put it on your veggies, you can, all different things, all different ways. Um, so yes, that will really, really help. What kind of dosage for supplements? Just follow the manufacturer's guidelines. It's really potent, it's really powerful, and just that will be a big help baseline. Um, so Lauren has asked, is this free immune class available to people who are not already affiliated with you? Yes, in so many ways. Um, in the way that firstly, uh, this class that I'm teaching right now is being posted on my free public Facebook page. If you're meaning the month ahead in the Alpine Basecamp, uh, yes, anyone can join that. If you're meaning, can I share this with my friends? Yes, you can give the link to whoever you want. Um, here's that link. You can share that with whoever you want. And anyone who's not, not already with me, if you're just here, you can. Yes. So anyone, it's open to everyone. That's the simple way of answering that question, isn't it? Uh, if we're having the greens, turmeric, beets and water and little sugar gluten, if we're doing that already, is that enough? Or are you saying that we need the C, D and turmeric supplements at the moment as well because of COVID-19? Uh, I would have them as well as your safety net. That's where supplements play a role is as a safety net, um, especially the vitamin D because there's not really vitamin D in any of those foods. Um, it's hard to get really good food sources of vitamin D. Um, so I would recommend vitamin d supplement ongoing outside of this crisis do you need it every day probably not but you i'd probably have it every few once every few days 
Um, outside of this crisis, the only way of getting your vitamin D levels is through having your blood work done. But I please do not burden pathology labs with that sort of thing at the moment. Um, uh, so I would supplement at the moment, yes, to make sure that A, you've got your baseline levels up to where they need to be. So vitamin D is obviously sort of stored in the body, so you need to get your levels up. But also because these are a great baseline. They're a great safety net and they're really important. Um, thank you, Marsha. That isn't a question. That's just a lovely thing to say. I really appreciate that. I'm going to hit the like button there. I've sort of forgot I can do that. But thank you, Marsha. That's really lovely of you. And to you too, Veronica, Ro, and everybody else. How do we strengthen or boost the adrenals, asks Dessa. Now, Dessa, I know you have already joined the uh, base camp for this month. Definitely jump into the portal. There is a lot of training on that in there. Um, and there is last year's class on hormone reset, which in May I will be all, all new, brand new deep dive training on the adrenals and thyroid and all the other hormone stuff as well. So look out for that. Um, the best thing you can do to support your adrenals is to stop stressing them. So the adrenals have many functions, but their main, 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 overwhelmingly main function that they will do first and drop everything to make sure they do this is produce cortisol. Um, so you absolutely need to stop your body unnecessarily producing cortisol so that your adrenals can get a breather and can get a chance to heal and repair and start regulating properly. If you've got a stressed adrenals, this can also have a knock-on effect to your thyroid as well, um, which I know is a concern for a lot of people. So as I mentioned earlier, when you have a acidic diet, an acid-forming diet that is putting your body into that state of diet-induced acidosis, your body will then automatically start pumping out uh, cortisol chronically, day in, day out, just nonstop that stresses your adrenals. So cutting back on those acid forming foods, particularly sugar, gluten, processed foods, returning to a fresh whole food plant based diet, getting in foods like healthy fats are really important for your adrenals. So omega threes, coconut oil, really important for your adrenals. Um, reducing inflammation is really important. So again, that turmeric and the ginger, um, getting in your greens, getting in those alkaline forming foods, instead of the acid forming foods is going to heal the other areas of your endocrine system that support your adrenals but also rely on correct cortisol regulation um, particularly your pancreas um, but also give your adrenals that space to breathe and um and and heal itself your body is a powerful regeneration tool when it's not stressed when it's under stress it can't regenerate so when your liver is constantly um, having to deal with fructose, it just it, your liver can only do this much, right, or this much. And if it's all of its capacity is up to here processing sugar all the time, it's only got this much capacity left to do all the other things it needs to do, which is play a role in your immune system, regulate your metabolism, detoxify you know, filter toxins and, and support you in so many different ways. The liver does so much. There's like 23 key essential roles that the liver plays in keeping you healthy and alive. And one of them is processed fructose. And if that's taken up 90% of its capacity, the beautiful thing is just eliminating fructose out of your diet or, or getting it down as much as possible, instantly your liver can do all this stuff again. And it's like it just raises your health on so many levels just in that one way. But if you want to strengthen and boost your adrenals, you have to stop stressing, and that's the that's the main spot. Um, I don't usually have sugar, including honey, but I'm wondering if it's a good idea to use some honey as it has so many nutritional benefits. So honey has some antibacterial, antiviral, particularly manuka honey, but so do lots of other foods that aren't fructose. So if you're only adding it in for those medicinal type of benefits, I'd probably add in the other foods that um, are going to give you that benefit that don't have the fructose in, if I'm being totally honest. And again, I'm not trying to tell you you have to be perfect. That's not the case here. But I'm telling you, like, 
what perfection is. So you can pick and choose the bits and make informed decisions that feel always work from your own intuition. Don't just blindly do what people tell you. Always work from your own intuition. I'm just giving you the knowledge right now so that you're you're making informed information based informed intuition decisions if that makes sense uh, uh, okay so Anna I've just scanned this but it seems quite interesting so let's have a look just made green smoothies every day no sugar for almost a month just woke up Friday and didn't want my morning coffee which is awesome at the moment needing encouragement that I don't need to feel like I'm missing out or that this is a diet um, and I go back to normal. I totally get what you're saying. You've done really, really well. You've done really, really well and I'm really, really impressed. It sounds like you've come out of the gate and gone for perfection, which is really difficult and impressive. So in normal circumstances, I don't encourage people to go for perfection <laughs> because of this. It makes it feel like there's stress and that this is a temporary measure and you're doing a diet and there is a period at some point where this ends and you go back to normal. So that's what you'll see in the Alpine Base Camp is this is all about making this into a effortless, enjoyable, delicious, fun, easy lifestyle that is the rest of your life. So within that perfection, some people just uh, perfect and they're really annoying and we secretly are annoyed by them yet yeah, jealous not that's like one percent of people uh, for normal people we need to have bits and pieces that feel like a treat and feel like normal so um, Anna while I can't sit for example and say coffee is totally fine because caffeine does spike create adrenaline which spikes your cortisol levels your your adrenals um you know as a treat every now and again like it's, these things can be done um i would say that if you jump into the alkaline base camp anna for this month you will see over the course of this month that there is a really great way of doing this 80 20 that you can still have treats, that you can still have some normal meals and that you can transition more gently. The way I encourage people to look at this is when you start slow, and someone said earlier they're taking their baby steps, when you can start slow and bring these things in one step at a time, or quick steps at a time, like you're clearly capable of doing, Anna, but without putting any pressure on yourself, you don't have to put that pressure on yourself. The more you do, the better you'll feel. And the better you feel, the more you'll naturally not want to do the other things. Like you've just said, you just woke up on Friday and just didn't want your morning coffee. That's massive, isn't it? That's massive. And the more you do this without the pressure of giving stuff up, the more your subconscious and your subconscious mind sort of, sort of work together to the subconscious kind of you stop noticing things and you stop suddenly craving something you weren't thinking about. And your conscious mind will connect to go, when I do this, I feel great. And I just consciously, my monkey mind even, is saying to me, doing X equals feeling crappy doing Y equals feeling good. So I'm going to naturally gravitate more towards doing Y. Does this make sense? So remove the pressure, Anna. Allow yourself to have whatever you want. Within this context of knowing what you now know, knowing what works, knowing what on the scale of good to bad is, you know, fruit contains fructose. But having fruit is kind of way better for you than having a Mars bar or a can of soda, which also contains fructose, do you, if you catch my drift. Having a really well-made barista poured, not that any of us can go to a coffee shop anymore, uh, a coffee is a real treat and you can really enjoy that and really that's great. Just mindlessly having instant coffee at home three times a day is 
probably not great, you know? So it's finding that balance. The, the big picture here is this isn't designed to be perfection. This is designed to be perfect for you. It's designed so that it becomes a lifestyle and it's designed to roll out without stress so that when you reach a stage that, let's say you reach perfection in however long, weeks, months, years, whenever that is, you're there because you love it and this you don't want to live any other way rather than it feeling like this is a temporary part of your life. I hope that makes sense. But step back from where you are now. Look at the things because you've gone about this in a way that isn't how it normally rolls out. People normally go for perfection and then fall over and then come to me and go, oh, what, what do I do? How? What did I do wrong? But you've gone for perfection and succeeded. <laughs> so this isn't um, – but take a step back now and go, what do I feel intuitively are the things that have made the biggest difference? What have I really enjoyed? What have I found really hard? Of the things that I wished I was allowed to eat or drink over the last month, what have I missed? And what would have been the most detrimental versus what wouldn't have been so bad? And what can I allow back in um, as a treat? Maybe just go and have a, a, a cheat meal and see how you feel afterwards. And I'm not saying like that in a way of like, yeah, and see how you feel. I'm saying it in a way of like, do it, have a cheat meal as like a way of having a big exhale, a big deep breath, and enjoy it. But also be mindful of going, do you know what? I do feel a bit crappy now, and I enjoyed it, but I could have lived without it, and now I'm ready to kick back on again. But just take a step back from 100% to 70% and see how you go for the next month after that. The fact that you're no longer even wanting coffee is amazing. And I'm really amazing. The fact that you're having your green smoothies every day, amazing. You're doing so much for yourself and I really want to applaud you. That's so awesome. June, can COVID-19 live on raw greens? That's massively out of my area of expertise, but an interesting question. So certainly Google it. Can coronavirus live on the surface of vegetables? And how do you get it off? That's a really great question. Is apple vinegar alkaline? No, it's not. And it doesn't have an alkaline forming uh, effect once consumed. Um, it's a useful food ingredient every now and again in salad dressings and things, but I wouldn't be taking it daily. Um, and a more, a, nothing raw during the COVID-9 pandemic. I mean, it's, yeah, don't, my answer is the same. Um, Dominique, <laughs> I'm going to get to that. Let's see how we're going. Uh, lovely to see you too, Ika. Uh, and Dessa, I'm pleased to help. Tony, no, you're the man, Tony. I'm impressed by you. You're always doing so much. You're doing the good stuff for yourself. Um, all right. Thank you, Anna. I'm glad that you are feeling much more relaxed about that. Uh, so let's have a look. We've got one, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight questions to go through still. So let's say, I mean, while you guys are still here, we may as well keep going, hey? Um, and if you're enjoying this, you'll really enjoy being in a membership because we do one of these every single month and it's always awesome. And the questions that come up are so varied. And it's always so much fun. So, uh, so Dominic clarifies about whole foods. I mean, like darker varieties of e.g. Uh, pasta and bread uh, is the correct word, wholemeal. I think wholemeal was what you were looking for. Um, and the answer is no. <laughs> so they still contain gluten. So it just eliminates any potential benefit. Oh, aside from fiber, I'm not sure what benefit could be in those. So no. Uh, so the darker varieties are generally things like spelt and rye. They still contain gluten. So no, go for gluten-free or uh, veggie um, uh, plant-based substitutes. Is whole turmeric root paste okay? Yeah, definitely, as long as it doesn't contain processed stuff as well. If it's just natural, some form of a natural preservative, like an oil um, and turmeric as ingredients, that would be great. Uh, how did fermented foods fit in? Um uh, they fit in. I'm being reticent because I've gone through this process, this description with 
my members and of which there's some on here so many times and I'm just trying to think if I've got a written resource I can point you to but I'll just go through it. So basically if you've got gut uh, dysbiosis right now, bad bacteria proliferation, too much bad stuff, not enough good stuff in your gut right now and imbalance, given how thirsty talking is making, I should use less words. If you've got an imbalance of gut bacteria, um, just chucking fermented foods, probiotics, that sort of stuff in there is not going to be a huge help. Uh, bad bacteria will feed off any bacteria. So you run the risk of, at best, it not really doing anything, at worst, it making it worse. What you need to do to rebalance your gut bacteria is, firstly, we call it the weed seed feed. Weed is weed out all the bad bacteria, get rid of it. We do that by cutting its food supply, which is primarily sugar, gluten, processed foods. If we can get this out, it will die off. When you get a blank canvas, we seed. This is where fermented foods can help. Kimchi, kombucha, um, sauerkraut, all these types of things, amazing. You can use a probiotic supplement, but I prefer the whole food equivalent, just a more natural, balanced variety of bacteria. Do that for about two to three weeks, and then you move into the feed. Once the good bacteria is now grown, you move into the feed, which is where you can scale back the fermented foods. Fermented foods, they're acid forming very mildly by their nature, but they, they can be delicious. So you can use them as a treat here and there generally. But in then that feed, that third process, having a more alkaline diet of leafy greens and veggies and all those sorts of things is where the good bacteria will stay nice and strong. And because you're not really eating that much sugar and gluten, Glugger and Schuten, um, you won't get the bad bacteria back again. So that's really the process um, in a real nutshell. Um, let's have a look. What about eating fruit during COVID crisis? Yep, that's great. Go for the lower sugar fruits if possible. Berries, basically, rather than the higher sugar fruits, bananas, oranges. Um, and someone's been asking me this for ages. I did promise it to them, but going into the membership, in the next couple of days will be an alkaline uh, fructose guide to how much fructose is in each type of fruit so you can pick and choose wisely. Been promising that for ages. There's someone, they've been emailing me just intermittently going, you got that fruit thing yet, mate? And it's like, oh, no, yes, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. I'm just trying to quickly scan my ridiculous inbox now to see if I can quickly see who it was and I want to apologize to them because they could be on this call, but uh, no, I can't see. Sorry, it is it is going to be in there this week. Right, let me get back to this page. Um, what's your opinion on olive leaf extract supplements? They're really good. Yeah, great for immune support. I just didn't want to overwhelm you with every supplement under the sun. There's loads. Antioxidant supplements are really good for your immune system as well. Didn't want to overload you. Does pink, red grapefruit help detox liver? Yes. My calcium tablets with vitamin D are calcium carbonate, and I seem to recall I should be taking calcium citrate. No, calcium carbonate is great. That's great. Um, are there other foods that have the same nutritional benefits as hone? Um, can you clarify hone, please? <laughs> uh, you're welcome, Sandy. What about alcohol or wine? <laughs> I was waiting for this one. <laughs> and good on you, Claudia, for asking. Uh, because some people go, oh, I shouldn't ask that. Uh, totally fine to ask that. Look, it ain't gonna help, put it that way, but it's also not the worst thing in the world. The biggest problem I see here with uh, alcohol uh, or wine, I love how you try to uh, distance wine from being alcohol in your question. Uh, the one thing, and this is something I was gonna include in the talk up front, but I wanted to not overwhelm you. We will talk about this a lot more in the base camp. Um, I wish I could pin that link to the top so I didn't have to keep posting it, um, but I'll just keep posting it. The uh, uh, farewell suit. The thing about alcohol, and I was gonna talk about this, but talk about it more in the base camp, is sleep and stress. So in terms of alcohol and wine, most people do tend to have alcohol in the evening as a particularly red wine as a way to relax and uh, help get off to sleep. So I go, oh, if it helps you get off to sleep. But no, it doesn't because 
Um, and this is wonderful that the, we have these uh, devices now that I don't use because I don't like electricity around my body at the best of times, particularly while I'm asleep. But lots of people do use them, so I can use their data. Is these like rings and things and sleep trackers on the phone and all that sort of stuff that can measure your quality of sleep. Um, Dr. Peter Atia, who is a great, uh, a great, um, sorry, I just got distracted. A text message came through of my little boy's daily Lego creation. <laughs> He's doing a 30 day Lego challenge whilst isolating. And I just got text the picture he's made today. I'll share it with you all in the group afterwards. Um, it's of a spaceship. Uh, Dr. Peter T does lots of the body testing composition stuff. He's fantastic. He's got a really great podcast podcast called The Drive. Um, so he really keeps an eye on his blood sugar levels and his sleep and everything. And he's found just how much of a detriment even one glass of wine has on your sleep quality. Um, so in terms of alcohol, sleep is so, so important for your immune system something that I will be catching up on later today, having, like I said, got up at 3.30 this morning for you guys. Um, it's hard because, again, I don't want to say, no, you can't do anything, you have to be perfect. But at the same time, don't be having like a, a, an evening glass of wine every night because that's just going to savage your sleep. But here and there, out now and then, it's really important that you keep psychologically strong during this time if you are um you know at home with the other half having a date night at home where you cook a nice meal and have a nice glass of wine is really important so i'm not going to say no it's not alkaline forming and it doesn't help you sleep so don't make it like a daily or nightly occurrence but i'm not going to tell you you can never have it uh what are some other foods to build and strengthen the blood basically any um green food that contains chlorophyll, which also contains foods that contain a lot of iron, like spinach. Um, but chlorophyll is a great blood builder, so loads of green foods is going to be really good for your blood. Um, and Dessa, I think you asked, did you not, about Addison's in the group? And that's why I'm making the connection now that you're talking about adrenals. So we'll go into that much, much more as the month unfolds, and certainly a lot next month as well. Um, Barbara... If you've done my alkaline reset cleanse, now would be a good time to do the fermented foods part. And it's we're just talking a couple of serves a day, like a couple of spoons of sauerkraut. Um, and let's have a look. Some say you should have a lot of magnesium supplements. Is this really necessary? Magnesium is a really good, strong alkaline mineral and also something that a lot of people are deficient in. So having magnesium is a good choice. It is a good choice. And that's why I sort of said, aside from those critical ones right now for your immune system, there is a body of uh, supplements that I sort of do recommend. Um, and a good alkaline mineral supplement would be one of those. Uh, so Alkamind Daily Minerals is my super recommendation. Um, but having a magnesium uh, magnesium glycinate is my favorite form of magnesium. Who has, I mean, this is like one of those things, isn't it? Who in their right mind has a favorite form of magnesium? <laughs> Honestly, sometimes, sometimes I question myself. <laughs> Who has a favorite form of magnesium? But that's mine. There you go. Uh, Start on this path, eliminated. Um, Oh, this is just a nice story. Eliminated caffeine, sugar, alcohol, gluten, hardly any dairy, low small green veggies and water feels so much better and CFS improved. Awesome, Alison. Still need to do the weed seed feed, but we'll get there. Um, Alison, that's amazing. Uh, and dairy is another food that is awful for your immune system. So try to get those down a little bit. Um, Sandy, I'm a bit confused about what you said about fermented foods. Um, I think your confusion is going, this is what I've heard, but this is what you're saying. So it's up to you. It's totally up to you. You can do what I'm saying based on my research. You can do what they're saying based on their research. But it's not going to be like awful for you if you don't do what I say. But I'm just saying this is a way to optimize. Uh, 
June, great to have you. Uh, Dominique, coconut oil is the healthiest oil to cook with. Um, and I think, guys, that might be all the questions. I'm not sure I can see any others. If there's any others, pop them in now in the next 10 seconds. Really, I urge you all to join in for these 30 days. I know I'm sort of banging on about it a little bit. Um, but it's just going to be a really important month and it's my way of giving to my community and I really want to support you. And this gives us a chance, even if you forget all the stuff that's in there, it gives you a chance to be a part of my community for 30 days where we support each other and we're stronger together and we can get through this together. Um, and <clears throat> I feel very, very strongly about that. I feel very strongly that being part of a like-minded, supportive community right now is more important than anything. And this gives you the chance to do that. So, guys, thank you so much for being on this session with me. We've gone for an hour and a half. That's pretty good. Coconut oil is great, Dessa. I'll answer more about coconut oil. Stay tuned because I'll answer more about coconut oil in the Facebook group for this thingy. So, guys, I'm... So grateful for all of you for being on this session with me. I'm grateful to all of you who have already joined because I want to help and I can't help if you don't join. So I'm grateful to you for joining and oh, just let's do this. Let's do this. Weird times, but remember, I said at the top of this session, remember there is so much you can do. There is so much hope and strength that you can bring into your body. Be confident. Take those steps forward. Be strong. Um, and just look after each other. Love you guys. Thank you again so much. Let's. Uh, I'm just going to keep talking while I find the end live video button. But I've found it now, so now I'm really going. You will, of course, be able to get this recording. I'll post it into the uh, base camp as well. Here's that link one more time. Jump if you haven't, guys. Love you all. Take care. Speak soon. Bye now.